Good afternoon. This is Julie Theobald, Executive Director of the Educational Theater Association. And we're so glad that you're here to join us for our town hall today on member benefits. I'd like to uh, introduce my colleague here, Dan Durger, and he's gonna tell you about himself and our guests. Thanks, Julie. Um, my name is Dan Durger, and I'm the membership outreach manager here at the Educational Theater Association. And also joining us today are two of our professional members. First from Troop 8628 at Marco Island Academy in Florida, we have Troop Director Chris Dayette. Hey everyone. And we also have Joe Deere, a professor of theater and the chair of Wright State University's Department of Theater, Dance and Motion Pictures. Hi Joe. Hi, good to see everybody. And I wanna say, um, I'm sending a shout out especially to Troop 2217 in Tampa, Florida, where I was the president of the troop in 1978-79. Uh, <laughs> Great, thanks, Joe. Uh, today's town hall is divided into two sections. First, we're gonna discuss the professional member benefits um, that are part of being a member in the Educational Theater Association. And then later, we'll talk a little bit more about the student benefits um, as part of being a member in the International Thespian Society. But to begin, Julie, can you describe for us some of EDTA's newest benefits for professional members? Sure, and I wanna start with the newest and the most exciting, I think, benefit that has come about for teachers in the last 30 years since we decided to change the name of the organization to the Educational Theater Association. We are really raising the bar on professional development. We've had professional development at conferences in person. We've had articles in magazines and many of you may be familiar with those. But what's really new this year is Theater Educator Pro, which is our online platform for professional development that can be accessed anytime. And it's for teachers and for students. And we have continued to put more and more materials on there in lots of different categories as well as lesson plans, webinars, and all kinds of things we'll talk to you about in a minute. And I wanna start by asking Chris, um, since he has uh, been a user of Theater Educator Pro, how you fit TE Pro into your classroom. Sure, so we're a small school, about 250 students, and I teach multi-levels uh, of theater. So it's, it's very common for me to have Theater One, Theater Two, Theater Three, and Theater Four. Um, in the same class. So I find uh, some of the, the things, uh, some of the videos and some of the lesson plans really helpful in that, uh, for, for that category specifically, because I'm able to give some of the, the lessons to my advanced students and have them work with some of the, the intro students. I think it's, uh, it gets, it's, uh, the videos and the lesson plans spark more creativity, spark a lot of, um, uh, I don't want to say, creativity and, and, and learning. Um, it gives some, uh, some independency to the more advanced students and then also gives them a chance to direct. Great. And can you talk about how you work with your administrator? Um, do you actually get professional development credits um, for using Theater Educator Pro? Yes, my, uh, my administrator is very, very supportive when it comes to, to the arts and um, I uh, would give her the certificate and, and I do get the, the professional development credit. Excellent. And these are some examples on this slide of the webinars on Theater Educator Pro. Similar to what we're doing today for EDTA topics, these webinars are topics for professional development with different content experts. Great, and this slide is just showing a small sampling of past webinars we've had. And at the bottom, you can see two of the upcoming webinars, the very next two. Um, next week on March 18th, there'll be a webinar about theater of the oppressed, and the following week, one called All Things Sound. So you kind of get an idea of the breadth of the types of webinars that are available. Um, everything for curriculum, to pedagogy, to technical theater. There's just a really wide variety. Um, so it's a great thing to check out. So thanks for sharing that information, Chris. Now, one of our other most popular benefits is access to our signature members-only publications. And those, the two main publications are Dramatics and Teaching Theater. And then we have our newest offering, which is dramatics.org. 
Now, Joe, you've been a contributor actually to all three of these publications. And from that perspective, can you describe the differences among them and what you see as the value they give our members? Yes, well, I, I'll say it's one of the great pleasures I have as a professor, and I'm also an, uh, an author of a couple of books, um, acting in musical theater and directing in musical theater. It, the, the publications, the, the EDTA publications, I think are fantastic. And I love that one of them, Dramatics, is targeted specifically to theater students, and the other, Teaching Theater, is targeted specifically to their teachers. And the big differences, I think, are that Dramatics will take a subject that is really accessible to students, and I think often has a lot of um, sort of contemporary value for them, what's, what's hot for them right now or what's really of interest this year, this season. And it allows, uh, it allows the writer to slice it very thinly and keep it at exactly the right length for a student to read in one setting. I also think that the, the nature of how we typically write for that audience, it, you know, we adapt the voice of whatever the subject is to really serve those students. And, and I think it's great. It's always just the right size and just the right voice. And then teaching theater, it's their longer form articles. And I think of them as a way to create content that is going to be essentially a lesson plan for a teacher. So if you're looking, I, I wrote a, I've written about using students as your assistant director or working on um, a production, particularly looking at directing the costume design or directing the scenic design or working with your ensemble in a production. They're a little bigger ideas and they're much more teacher director centered, but I think that they are, are super valuable. To me, it's always utility belt skills that students can grow and benefit from. And then, and then um, uh, the online publication, um, dramatics.org, is the, the, the um, articles are, are really easy to access. They're all well formatted for an online, uh, for online publication. And I think that they're targeted absolutely towards students. So super valuable. They have three different kind of points of access. And I think that both of the magazines are the kind that you're gonna wanna collect. That's the sort of thing that does end up on the shelf and you keep them and you can go back and look for ideas when you're feeling a little, a little sort of wrung out, that's a great place to look for ideas. So Joe, what, do the pub what does publication in these mean to you as a theater professional? Well, there are two great benefits for me. Um, one is, so, so university professors are always looking for opportunities to, if you're um, a traditional scholar, and I'm both a director and an author, but if you're a traditional scholar, you're looking for places to publish that are gonna have impact and that are gonna be meaningful to, um, you know, contribute to your, um, to your form, to your field. So that's the first thing. And I, and I think that, that depending on your institution, uh, there's a lot of value placed on it. But I, I'm a tenured full professor, so I don't have to worry about the sort of publisher parish thing. My real interest in writing is that it reaches an audience that I care a lot about. And I know that if I write for dramatics or teaching theater or dramatics.org, I'm going to reach an audience that, that values what I write and it's going to impact them positively and also reflect really well on my institution. I like to brag about Wright State University and I'm proud of what we do and I like students and teachers to know us. So those are the big benefits for me. That's great. Now, Joe, I know a lot of times the things that you write um, end up becoming part of what you do a, uh, an intensive at at our national conference. Is that right? Yeah, so, so um, I'm, I'm really fortunate that I have had a more than 10 year relationship with EDTA doing workshops for students um, at the international festival and often at state festivals. And then I also do professional development institutes at the um, international that are just for teachers or sometimes at the national conference. And I see this slide has next year's um, Fest, uh, next year's national conference in St. Pete. Um, it's a great opportunity for people like me who have a passion for working with high school and junior high school educators to be able to bring our work to, to those teachers and also to help them develop skills that they, that they might either want to sharpen or they may just not have. So those, the, the PDIs and the workshops are wonderful. 
Thank you, Joe. And I just want to add, you know, the EDTA conference, I see teachers sacrifice so much for their students. And I feel like this is the event for you. Uh, it's just a great way to recharge. I think often theater teachers can feel like they're on an island because sometimes no one in their school exactly understands what you do. And uh, when you get with your tribe, everyone understands what you do and supports each other. And it's just very energizing. Everyone always comes out of the weekend excited, making new friends, feeling like they've got practical things to do right back in their classroom. I agree. So, it, it's given me a network that is a really a national network of high school teachers that I can reach out to and who connect with me when they're interested. It's, it's one of the best things about it. Thank Great. you. Thanks, and last Paul. year we had about 700 uh, educators at our conference. And you know, if you have, um, if you could use support in pitching to your administrator why this is important, we also have tools online. We have an administrator justification kit and ROI tool to help you understand the value and um, advocate for yourself. We also have grants for teachers um, to help support the registration based on that's not something that you have the funding. So three recent benefits uh, that EDTA provides for all of our professional members are mentor match, um, access to our teaching artist directory, and use of our career center. Now, Mentor Match is perfect for brand new teachers who are looking for support in their first years of teaching. Um, EDTA matches beginning teachers with experienced teachers who have um, offered uh, to be a mentor on a wide range of topics, including curriculum, pedagogy, classroom management, and maintaining a work-life balance. But Mentor Match is also available to any teacher who just wants to learn more about a specific topic. So for example, if you're looking to improve your skills in stage combat, you can request a mentor with expertise in that area and EDTA would uh, link the two of you together and the two of you can work um, outside of the EDTA platform, but you would connect with each other and that person would mentor you through that content. Now the teaching artist directory is designed to help EDTA members find theater professionals who can enhance their students' classroom experiences and also help them to easily locate workshop leaders or speakers for events that they might be having. And then lastly on this slide, the Career Center. Um, it's a place to both look for and to post job opportunities. You can post your resume, search for jobs, and set up job alerts. And currently that uh, Career Center has 46 job postings from 42 different employers. So there's quite a wide variety of jobs there from across the country and even outside of the country if you're interested and that's what you're looking for. So it's a really great resource to check out. Another one of our most used benefits is access to the theater education community. Now the discussion forums here are excellent resources to help teachers when they are trying to consider a future show that they might want to do at their school, if they're trying to work out uh, tricky production challenges, but also to get tips for how to manage just their lives as a teacher. Um, Joe, we spoke previously and you told me a really interesting story about a contribution that you had to the community discussion forum about singing in the rain. Yes, so um, uh, I was browsing the forum and I saw a question about how do you do the rain? How do you make that mechanical thing work? Uh, and which is obviously sort of in many ways it's the star of the show, like the chandelier in Phantom of the Opera or the helicopter in uh, Miss Saigon or something. Uh, I, I happen to be um, uh, stage manager and swing dancer on the national tour of Singing in the Rain and I, I knew the really expensive way to do it and I knew the really cheap way to do it and was happy to be able to contribute to that. But I've seen lots of things in there, people asking who has a particular set of props or we're doing thoroughly modern Millie, who's got a set of desks we might be able to use. So it's everything from do you have to how do you do and what shows have worked well. It's just a really exciting form and people tend to contribute very freely. Great, thanks Joe. So this slide is just a summary of many of the benefits we've just been talking about. I do want to draw your attention though to the last three bullets that are highlighted. These are just some things we haven't mentioned yet, but as part of your professional membership benefits, you're also eligible to apply for EDTA grants and scholarships that we have available. There's also advocacy support and representation 
and application assistance for royalty discounts on non-musical productions uh, for those who have active troops and are professional members. So now we want to kind of change our focus here to um, looking at the student benefits for membership in the International Thespian Society. So Julie, can you start us off on this section by describing some of the uh, most important benefits, which would be the recognition and the honor that's part of being inducted into ITS? Sure. So the organization has been around for over 90 years. And back in 1929, when our founders created it, this was really the vision, which was in a school, there are ways to recognize things like athletics or academics, but there really wasn't a great way to shine a light on the achievement of theater students. So the International Thespian Society is all about that. And I think of it as like a system or structure that gives the teacher a tool to help motivate their students and grow their program by growing their part participation and involvement. So when a student participates in theater, they earn points toward induction in the International Thespian Society. And they earn those points for their work on stage, but also behind the scenes and in community service and in leadership of their troops. And when the student is inducted, they become honored and they become part of something bigger than themselves. They get tangible, tangible benefits like pins and member cards. They get Dramatics Magazine and Dramatics.org. Um, but they also get part of an international honor society, kind of like the National Honor Society, but for theater. And that's something that they can tout in the resume and college applications. And then as part of graduation, a lot of schools will have the students wear honor cords or different items to make sure that everyone understands what the student has achieved. Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about your school and how um, ITS recognition is a tool for you as a teacher? Sure. Um, we, we recognize the achievements in academics uh, in senior year, and then all the seniors are eligible to wear cords at, at graduation. So we save all of the, the honors recognition for, for senior year. Um, we have we have a lot of fun with our induction ceremony and last year we're at our school we're since we are an honor society we're held in the same regard as National Honor Society and Science National Honor Society so we had a combined induction ceremony for all three honor societies um, and this this year we're going to to do our own uh, I think just because uh, it was I think the, for, for theater, the, the, the general public didn't quite understand what, what, what went on in the, the, the theater program uh, and the theater uh, honor society. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna do our own this year. So it makes it a little bit more special for, for our students and we can have a little bit more fun. Um, but uh, in, the points has really been helpful uh, in terms of earning, earning points for uh, all of the things that the students volunteer for or, or work on in the show. Um, we had an issue with students not staying after rehearsal to clean up and so they did not earn their points as a result of that and did not get inducted so it it, it helps a lot that's a really Great. interesting example uh, yeah. the point about the science honor society national honor society we always talk about theater being recognized as an academic subject on the same level as those academics and that is a really tangible symbol of your school seeing it on the same level as, as science or academics Yes, and usually um, whenever something is needed at the school, you know, from a service perspective, the, the, three, the three teachers uh, are asked first, like, what, what can you do to help, um, help the school with this event? Or does your organization have any interest in helping uh, with volunteering for this event? So, it's, so having the Honor Society has made you a go-to yes. resource in your school. Yes. That's awesome. Great. And a lot of what Chris is talking about right now has to do with leadership, you know, building those leadership skills in your students. And that's another key benefit for the students. They have these multiple opportunities for leadership at the troop level, at the chapter level, and then, of course, at the international level as well, which just, you know, it allows them to have a greater impact on their communities, but it also gives them that kind of experience that can be reflected on college applications and uh, job applications and job resumes, um, that type of thing, it's just another benefit of membership. So Julie, as we look towards more things for the students, can you describe a little bit about those grants and scholarships that are available to them? Absolutely. Um, let me first talk about awards. And those awards are for students as well as awards that students can nominate their teacher or the administrator or their school for. 
you know, sometimes teachers don't always feel appreciated, especially how hard we work in theater. And if your school is not appreciating your teacher, having a national uh, association with stature like EDTA, recognizing that teacher really gets people's attention. And so um, we have national awards that students can nominate. One of them is called the Inspirational Educator Award, and that has to be nominated by a student or a teacher. We also have a lot of scholarships and grants. So last year, we awarded over $270,000 in scholarships. Those are coming from our chapters at the um, festivals in the States and then they're coming from the International Thespian Festival. And then we have a lot of scholarships that any student can apply for online, so they don't have to attend an event in order to qualify. There's also grants, like I said, to come to some of the events. So for example, the Send a Troop to Festival grant is $10,000, helping a group of students come to the International Thespian Festival. Great, and I think, you know, sometimes um, I think people do have a misconception that only the students who appear on stage are actually reaping the benefits of membership in ITS, which of course, as we all know, is, is not true. In fact, there's far more opportunities to earn thespian points off stage than there are on stage. Um, and it's important that students are honored for their, all their contributions in theater. Um, Chris, can you describe for us how this important aspect plays out at your school with the backstage and the onstage component? Sure. Well, I mean, as Joe mentioned, uh, having skills in your tool belt is, is very important. And I think it's important that, that everyone remembers that theater is not just about acting. Um, I'm a jack of all trades theater practitioner. So I do directing, choreographing, music directing, set design, set construction, and, and the marketing. Um, and it's great. Uh, this year, uh, or actually last year, I started a design and marketing class because I saw a growing interest in students working behind the scenes. And last year, I think I went from, I had seven students in the class, and this year I have 26. And we just finished midterms, and I just read the reflections for what it was like. Uh, I had the requirement for them to all work on on Into the Woods. Um, and, and so doing all of the social media marketing and publicity um, building, constructing, and uh, they're getting ready to work on their individual design elements, so and which will prepare them for the district competition uh, in the fall. But uh, just reading their reflections and saying, you know, I always thought theater was about acting, and, and now I think I want to do this. I want to get involved in the show a little bit more next year, or um, I, I have learned skills that I can take in any job that I, that I, I do after high school. So I thought that was, that's one of the benefits of, of teaching and, and recognizing that theater isn't all about acting, that there are lots of other jobs that you can do in theater. Right. We, so talk, you said, about, we talk about a well-rounded education, and Chris, the way you describe that is such a great example. Yeah. And you said you only had 250 students at your school, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, so to have 26 students in that class is pretty amazing. It, it is. It's uh, the semester. So. Right. So good for you. So, Joe, um, how does that extend then this idea of working backstage and on stage? How does that extend into the world of university theater and professional theater? Yeah, well, I think it's it, it, what well, I know always when I'm looking at a student application for our acting or musical theater program or the theater studies, which is our BA program. When I see a resume of a student wanting to come into those programs, I always notice when they've been a thespian, and especially thespian officers, but membership in the ITS is always, uh, is always a signal that a student has really been engaged, and very often that they have tried on a lot of different hats, which I think, um, Chris, you mentioned that you are a jack of all trades. Um, we all have to be multifaceted. My university has a student-run theater that did I think 68 events last year that were all student produced, directed, designed, choreographed, music directed, sometimes student written, including book, music, and lyrics of original musicals, and everything across the map. 
what students learn in high school, what they learn as members of the International Thespian Society is how to begin that journey and how to think of themselves as being capable of doing so much more than the single narrow focus of their major. And I think ITS sets that up just beautifully. So, so I think this is the perfect preparation for all kinds of college careers. We have a student who, uh, who wrote a play and took it to districts uh, in, in the fall and, and ended up uh, getting a superior and uh, best of uh, best in the room. And we're looking at possibly taking that show and maybe bringing it to one X next year. And so, you know, trying to build a student team around this entire show, having a student director, student designer, Etc. And all of that comes out of out of what we what we're able to do with thespians. That's amazing. As we move into our last point here, I wanted to, to mention that there is a chat box uh, Q and A. So for those who are joining, if you have any questions for any of us, please go ahead and put them into the chat box. So I'm going to wrap this up with what I think is probably the most special part of being a part of an association like EDTA, which is going to events. Uh, when students and teachers go to events, they are with people, their peers, their tribe from across the state or across the nation or the world. Um, so starting with our chapters, almost all of our state chapters have events for students. They have festivals um, where students can participate in workshops and make new friends. And, you know, one of the things I think is most inspiring is being able to see the work of other schools and having that then raise the level of excellence in your own program. So chapter events are the most accessible because they're in the state and often um, you can get there on a bus um, and they're more um, local and usually for a weekend. And then our ultimate event of the year, uh, which is probably the best thing that we do is the International Thespian Festival. It's a full week on a college campus. It's at the Indiana University Bloomington. It's about 5,000 students that come from all over the country and the world. And uh, you get to see some of the best high school theater in the country, uh, work with artists from Broadway and all across the country, universities, um, professional artists, etc. cetera. And uh, it's really just this electric, inspiring atmosphere where students are just feeding off each other. And it's life-changing. You know, we hear stories every year of students who made a, a certain connection or never thought that they could do something in the professional world that they discovered when they were at the International Thespian Festival. I remember talking to one teacher who told me that she's been coming for 20 years and the first time she came, it was watching those main stage shows and just seeing that level of excellence, how that inspired her student and just raised the bar of her program every year. And just coming to this one event a year has completely transformed her program. So if you haven't been before, um, this is the best thing that we do, and uh, I hope that you can check it out. Uh, I wanted to end the webinar with um, one question for Joe and for Chris uh, to kind of sum things up, which is, I think you both have been members for kind of a while. Um, do you remember when you first joined what you were interested in, you know, why you joined, and how has that changed now in terms of how EDTA and the Thespian Society fits into your life. Chris, you want to go? Sure. Um, so I didn't have this in my high school. Um, and I started teaching in 2006 and became aware of, of Thespians and wasn't able to join then. And even when I was uh, teaching, uh, started teaching high school, wasn't able to join um, then back in 2011, but when I when I started it at MIA, um, I knew I wanted to to bring it back. And first, I needed to develop a, a core of kids that that I thought we could could sustain this. And so we we jumped in, had no clue what what I was getting myself into. I just wanted to to do this because I had heard about it for so long, and and wanted the opportunity for to to build a family, um, a community. Um, and also start to change the culture of, uh, of the school with, with what theater could be at our school, which is we're in modular buildings right now and we're, our performances are outside on our deck. We transform the deck into to a, to a stage. Um, so 
in our, in our first full year, we were able to go to districts and we were able to spend one day at, at States last year. And it, it was an incredible experience. And it, it, I've just seen this tight knit group of students that, uh, and, and one of them actually said, I feel like I have, I feel like I found a place where I belong. And that's one of those unexpected joys of, of this, uh, this organization is just finding a place where the kids can work together and out, outside of the, the, the school setting and outside of um, the extracurricular theater, but it's just something where they can all come together and, and become a family. It's, it's great to watch. Thank you for sharing that. How about you, Joe? I love Chris's story. It feels so much like the experience I had as a high school student. I mentioned that I was the troop president um, when I was a, a senior in high school, and that's a long time ago now. But I remember when I first started high school and discovered the theater group and the thespian uh, society there, my, our troop, I felt like I had found my people, my tribe, and um, it was a place where I could figure out how to be me uh, in a safe place. And it really is embedded in the, in the culture of the International Thespian Society. And it's where I learned leadership. Um, uh, I, I discovered that I really had a passion for carrying the cause forward. And that really is the beginning. Uh, I, I didn't know it, but it's the beginning of what became my life's work. Um, I, was, I was interested in being a, an actor and ultimately a dancer and did that on Broadway and all through college. But, but I was also always interested in directing. And I could begin doing that as a thespian and the leadership skills I started developing as a student officer um, uh, really blossomed as the years went on. And I know that as a department chair now and former artistic director of theaters and former stage manager on Broadway and so forth, that a lot of what helped me succeed in those parts of my career began when I was a thespian. So I'm, I'm infinitely grateful for it. And while my career looks different than I thought it would when I was in high school, it feels like it's an absolute extension of everything I learned in high school in the very best ways. So now when I can go to the International Thespian Festival or work with teachers and students from high schools, it just feels like the circle is completing and, and it's one of my, the happiest parts of my life. Thank you so much. Oh, that's such a great story. Thanks, Jill. I was getting goosebumps just listening to you talk. It was really good. <laughs> um, if you have any questions about um, anything that we've talked about, the benefits we've been discussing today, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions. Of course, anyone in membership services can help, but if you want to reach me directly, my email and phone, my direct line phone number is right there. And we've also provided some contact information for our membership manager. And if you've ever met or spoken with Brian Benz, you know he is the expert, <laughs> the be all end all expert in all things about ITS. So he can definitely answer any questions that you have. And I think that probably brings us to the end, Julie, is that right? Yep. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, this webinar will be, has been recorded and will also be available on YouTube for anyone uh, for you to share it with. So thanks for your time today. And uh, I hope that you learned something new and that you enjoy and take advantage of all the benefits that we offer. Bye-bye.